Good morning. Good morning. Let's try that again, huh? Good morning. There you go. We got them awake now. <laughs> Sounds like we're awake. If you guys can stand with us, we're going to worship this morning. Isn't it a great day to be in the house of the Lord? Well, good morning. What a cool morning we have, right? It is a sneak peek at fall right now, especially compared to this week. We've had a hot week. It is good to see you all in fellowship and praise our Lord today. So, it is the middle of August. Can you believe it? We are on the third Sunday of August. Almost, kids, sorry to say, school is starting this week for a lot of you. So I know a lot of you are probably bummed out about that. Parents, you might be excited about that. I'm not sure. But we have been discussing our series this month. It's called Promise. It's all about God's promises. In the book of Genesis, we can find a lot of God's promises, and they're still true today. God's promises are still true today. Our memory verse is from Joshua, and it says, Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Every one was fulfilled. Joshua 21, 45. Not one failed. All were fulfilled. Guess what? We serve the same God today. He has not changed. So a promise is still going to be fulfilled that he promises. We don't serve a changing God. So, today we're going to talk about a promise, kind of God's promises in a whole, but to explain it, I have candy, an infamous candy, something that people do not get on maybe Halloween or whatever, now and later. Does anyone like now and later? Raise your hand if you like now and later. There's a couple of you. I'm shocked. Not, not my favorite candy in the world. It is very, very hard to chew. I guess they're called now and later because eventually you can start chewing them and swallow them. A lot like now and later, this thing about God's promises kind of can be hard for us to swallow too. Guess what? God's promises are for now, but also for later. Do you have the patience? How many of you struggle with patience? 
Probably a lot more than actually are raising their hands right now. Abraham was in the same situation. Now, at this point, he's called Abram. That's his name. God promises him an entire nation, more than you can count the stars. And Abram decides to follow through on this promise, and God asks him to go where he wants to send Abram. So Abram goes. But soon later, he starts questioning God. He's like, I'm, I'm old. Sarah's old. How are we supposed to have offspring? Goes into to the point where they stop depending on God for this promise, and they take matters in their, to their own hands and mess up a lot of things along the way. But here's the thing. He was not looking, Abram wasn't looking to the future. God had something way more impressive in store for Abram. Abram just couldn't see the later. He was so focused on right now and what I've been promised right now, and he wanted it right now. So they took matters into his own hands and kind of made a mess of things. But guess what? Did that change God's promise? No. Now looking back, we, have, we can now see through Scripture that the promise was way bigger than what Abram could have ever imagined. And God fulfilled that promise. God's promises are for now, but they're also for later. Something to think about. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all. I have some great news today that I'm going to get to in just a second. Um, so hopefully you've already felt a warm welcome uh, from our church and our church people and um, that you feel blessed beyond measure as you um, continue worshiping with us. I have just a couple of announcements this morning and this is my good news. If you have missed the worship choir um, immensely, they're coming back. I know. I'm so excited about that. So their first time to rehearse will be Wednesday, September 8th. So you have to wait just a little bit longer, but it's coming um, at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Women's and Men's Chorus, as well as Bell Choir, will be starting later in September. So if you want to be a part, if you've just had this burning desire or feel an urge to serve in that ministry, contact Pastor Mike, and I know that he'll find a great place for you. So we're excited about that. Um, the next um, announcement that I have is also exciting, and that is coming up Sunday, September 12th. Um, after the morning worship service, we're going to have an um, all-church um, fellowship right out here in the lawn, um, right out here in the parking lot in the lawn there'll be. Um, and for that service, we're encouraging you to dress for outdoor fun, fellowship, games, and bounce houses. I think I remember one of these outdoor things, a couple of pastors racing on bikes, little mini bikes. Are you guys going to do that again? No. Anyway, you know, that might have been for the kids thing. I don't know. But anyways, you never know what the pastors will do. Um, but anyways, it will surely be lots of fun. And the announcement is there in the back of your bulletin. Please maybe tear that off and put it up on your calendar at home because it will be lots of fun. We are encouraging you to bring your own seating, um, side dishes, and desserts. So, um, And that's all I have for today. If you will stand and bow your heads for a word of prayer, that would be great. Lord, just like Pastor Jared mentioned to us about your word of making promises to us that you do not ever cease to keep. And Father, I ask that you would help us as a congregation to be patient with the things that you've promised us, both now and for what's to come later. 
I thank you, Lord, for the pastors of this church, and I ask, Lord, that you bless them. I pray that you would anoint Pastor Jonathan this morning as he brings us your word. I pray for each of us that as we're sitting in our pews and we've brought with us whatever we've brought with us, that you will help all of that to be cleared away and help us to hear your word the way that we need to hear you. Thank you, Lord, for the abundant blessings that you give to us and help us to see those the way that we need to see them. Thank you, Father, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. And I pray for those that are not able to join us that you would be with them as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. is a wonderful way to live and a life of praise always comes down to gratitude and to thankfulness a wonderful wonderful way to live Thank you. 
seated. Thank you also for leading me out, uh, leading with me when I, even though I was wrong. <laughs> You're good people. You're really good people. You support well. Thank you. Aren't we grateful for the way the Lord blesses us on a weekly, a daily uh, basis? God is so good, and he's so good to me. He's so good to you. Thank the Lord. Let's pray together. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you for all your great blessings in life. We come through a summer, and many of us have found a place to relax, to get away. Many are still going, and we thank you for the time that you've given us. Dear Father, but most of all, we thank you for the refreshment of your spirit in our lives. We thank you, dear Father, that you speak to us, that on a daily basis we can understand what it means to have a living relationship with Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And Lord, I pray that if there is one here today that doesn't know the reality of that experience, that they might reach out to you, dear Father, and find you because we know that you are just that close and you are here today to meet every need of our lives. Lord, in just a few moments, our pastor is going to come and speak to us. You have laid a message upon his heart. You have burned the words into his soul. And dear Father, we believe these are your words. So Father, we pray that you will speak to us as we gather and as we are here. In your name we pray, amen. Sing the words together.
Well, that's a good prayer to pray and to have in our hearts as we look at God's Word. Speak, O Lord. That's a good aim, isn't it? That is a good intention. I trust it is ours today. I want to take just a moment and do something that I don't normally do, but I'm just aware as we come together that not only is it a privilege to come together in person, but we also know that many are joining us by live stream. But we also have many who are unable to be with us today who um, are either recovering from uh, a significant surgery or have been ill and just are on a long timeline of recovery. And we want to be mindful of them. And I often mention them at the close of the service, but I want to give them just more attention today and the need more attention today before we look together at God's Word. So if you would, let's join together in uh, uh, an awareness of their needs, share a word of prayer together, and then we will look together at God's Word. We thank you, our Father, for the body of Christ. We know that there is no greater family, no greater organism, no greater community to be a part of in this life than the church of Jesus Christ. We love one another with the love that Christ has shed abroad in our hearts. We care deeply for one another. And so when we are uh, afflicted or when we are infirm, we are aware of that. We feel it together. We carry the load together. We bear one another's burdens as your word shares with us. So for those who are recovering today and cannot be with us, and have asked us to remember them in prayer, we don't want to fail to do that. We lift them to you today, the God of all power and strength and might and grace and ability. You are the great physician, Jesus, and we know that you care for your own. So touch, we pray, the lives of our people that we love dearly and we miss keenly. We pray that you would build them up and strengthen them, not only in their hearts and in their faith, but in their bodies as well we ask. We love our people. We love one another. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. So work, we pray, in wonderful ways in strengthening and in providing for the needs of our people, and we will praise you, O God, and we will thank you for what you constantly do for those who love you. We praise your name. We now ask for the anointing on your word, to minister to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. On a much lighter note, um, Pastor Mike and Kitty will be leaving today after the service for a much-needed vacation, and we're glad for them. And they want to get moving quite rapidly, so I would just ask you to please engulf them and ask them many questions today that you've been wanting to ask them, and uh, such as, what is the meaning of life? You know, those open-ended questions that have a lot of material to them. You're welcome. I just want you to know I'm always thinking of you, Pastor Mike. Also, they're just wanting to get away, and and I can give you the address, and I can tell you where that is. So they would welcome any of you at a a given moment. We're looking today at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 13 through 21. And I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. I want us to be aware of the title before we even read the text today, A Challenge to Be Conspicuous Christians. A a Challenge to Be Conspicuous Christians. Keep that in mind as we look together at this word. Would you stand with me, please, as we read? But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light, for everything that becomes visible is light. For this reason, it says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, and be subject 
to one another in the fear of Christ. You may be seated. Many of our conversations remind us on a daily basis that we're living in a world that truly has ceased to become, if it ever was, a very real friend to grace. So we're not in a day that will encourage you to be a follower of Jesus Christ. We're aware of that, aren't we? There really is nothing that is surfacing on a regular basis that we would say would have behind it the moral motive or the moral agenda to help us love God. It's not coming from our world. It's not coming from the sources that have influence over us. It's not coming from the places especially that influence our children. The schools are not necessarily in any way compelled to encourage your children to love God. In fact, God has been in large measure removed from the scene. Even our own school teachers um, have restrictions on them, what they can say, what they cannot say. In fact, we just have a notion that the world really needs to do best without religion and without God. Isn't that sad? So we're very much in a world that says that somehow whatever God has brought to the scene and whatever God invokes upon us has been a difficulty, a hardship has been worse than what we would want, and we're better off without Him. That, my friends, is a tragic mistake. That's an error and a sin from which you never recover if you don't ultimately turn to God. So our world, let's just frame it this way and let's be honest about it, our world not being a friend to grace, not encouraging us on to God, not encouraging our children to love Jesus, that world in which you and I live which is growing more and more distant from God and more, more and more indifferent to God and to His things, is an ever-increasingly dark world. So when we go out into the world, morally speaking and in, and, and in relation to truth, God always representing light and God always being the truth that is indeed the light of the world, we need to see that we are basically going um, out into darkness with every means of light needing to emanate from us in order to navigate it safely for ourselves, but also in order to be any kind of a draw and a magnetic pull for the world that doesn't know Christ. So I want to challenge us today with this call in Paul's letter to the believers in Ephesus. Ephesus was both a day of opportunity, a place of opportunity, but it was also a very dark moral place. So in the same setting and in the same context, the Apostle Paul is giving some of the greatest and soundest theology that you'll find outside of the letter to Romans. This is one of the most theologically jam-packed letters that you're going to find. And in or as a result of all that the Apostle Paul is teaching them, he's saying at the end of it, you need to be conspicuous. You need to be bright lights to the dark world. And so my challenge for us today would be the same that you and I would understand we are not called to live in a cave, we're not called to keep a shroud over us, and we're not called to live a life that never draws attention to Jesus. We're called to live courageous, conspicuous lives for Jesus. Amen. I asked Lauren that she put a sign up there on the screen at an appropriate inter interval to tell you when to say amen. That was an appropriate time. We are called to be courageous, conspicuous Christians in a dark and in a world that would do its best to present to every human being life without God. Now, we can't stand for that. Do we understand that? We cannot stand for that. Now, the reason is not because we have a battle that we think we need to win for our ego's sake. But what we do need to understand is for our soul's sake and for the souls of lost people, we can't hide. We must not hide. We must stand. We must be counted in these days. And we need to be conspicuous believers in Jesus Christ and followers of Him. Now, the world might laugh at us. Who cares? Thicken your skin. 
They might challenge us in one way or the other. You might not get the promotion, but thicken your skin and understand that God's grace is indeed in full and ample, undiminished supply for us to be what we ought to be on our watch. So don't look to the past and don't look to the future and say, either someone in the past or someone in the future will have to fill my part. No, you, you fill your part. You fill your part. Be conspicuous, faithful followers of Jesus. Amen. You're doing better. Amen. Now, I think what we have in front of us, and according to a lot of scholars, we have probably what would have been the makings of um, one of the first hymns of the early church. And I like it. I think we need to, we need, when, while Pastor Mike's on vacation, he needs to write this, and uh, he needs to put this in some kind of a song form for us. Awake, sleeper. That needs to be a rousing opening. Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Now, this ha obviously has multiple encouraging places to say things like this in the Scriptures, but there's nothing that really speaks specifically to all of these things in one spot. So it's possible that this was an early song of the church. Good one. It's a good one, don't you think? It's a good one. Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So I have three things to say to us today, and I usually do, and so you're, you're geared for that. Sometimes I tell you I have seven things and you faint. I only have three today. But I've tried to put them in a way that hopefully we will take them with us and remember. The whole purpose is to shine, isn't it? The whole purpose is to be light in the darkness. Folks who have, whose eyes spiritually have adjusted to the dark will find the light at times painful and intrusive, but the light needs to shine nonetheless. So the first thing that I would say to us, to us, this is to the church, this letter is to the church, the first thing that I would say to us is wake up, wake up, wake up, W-A-K-E. Wake up. Now, friends, there's a, there, there, there's a lot that could be said in relation to wake up. But I want us at least to understand, wake up and understand what is really essential and what is not. Wake up to what is essential and what is not. Wake up to what is essential and what is not. Eternity is critical. Right? You and I are only here for a short duration. So don't fight with vim and vigor and with all of your energy. Don't fight battles that are not essential. Don't waste your energy on that which is not critical. But for that which is eternal in its value or its outcome, fight tooth and nail for that. So wake up. Wake up to the battle zone. Wake up to what really matters. Wake up to eternal factors. Wake up to things that feed or detract from your soul life. Are you hearing me? Wake up to that stuff. Some of you fight more over mask or not mask than we do for our souls. We fight stupid battles, trivial things. Lace up the gloves. You're not going to tell me what to do. I know I'm already ruffling some feathers. Good. We have become dwellers on nonsense versus the most critical matters of the soul. Some of you won't read your Bibles, won't pray, but I'm telling you what, you will not miss one episode of Fox News. Let the chips fall where they may today. And I'm saying to all of us, wake up! Wake up to what's going on in the battle for the soul. 
Wake up to the influences that you're allowing into your own homes. Wake up. Wake up and realize what's at stake for your kids. Wake up. Wake up. Don't fritter away your time all day long on social media. It's not real in the first place. It's not? I've never heard that before. Wake up. Wake up. Some stuff, it's better just to turn it off. Don't touch it and read your Bible. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Wake up. Wake up to the moral influences that would lull you to sleep and and dull your sharp edge. Wake up. Wake up. Some stuff we may not be able to put our finger on it and say it's absolutely, unquestionably evil, but that's really not the question we need to ask if we're followers of Jesus. We shouldn't ever be on the edge of engaging in that which is absolutely evil. The bigger question for us is, what will just divert our attention from greater and more important things? Wake up. Okay? I love you dearly. Wake up. Wake up. Understand what's at stake. Second, rise up. Wherein we were once dead in trespasses and in sins, our lives ought to mark a great resurrection. Right? Our lives ought to demonstrate resurrection power to where we are not held down, bound by, restrained by the concerns of of an evil, wicked world. You and I should rise above that. Not that we are otherworldly or that we don't deal with the realities of this life, but that people will understand in all of what is just penetrating our thought life and our activities during the day, There is something in that person who lives next to me that they have a peace and a poise and an ability to rise above it that is mesmerizing to me. It's mystifying to me, but it's attractive to me. It's winsome to me. I guarantee you, if all around the land dead people were getting up, that would get some news attention. Wouldn't it? That's what it ought to be for any child of God. Anybody who comes to Christ dead and lost, who meets Jesus, is raised to newness of life. Your neighbors ought to tell the difference. The people that work with you ought to tell the difference. The people that do business with you ought to tell the difference. We ought to live as Long ago, Samuel Logan Bringle Bringle wrote a book, Resurrection, Life, and Power. We We ought to demonstrate a rising up that is not of our own making, but it is a spiritual resurrection that only can be accomplished by the Spirit of God applying to you and me the blood of Jesus. We ought to be able to say, once I was blind, now I see. I was dead, but now I'm alive right? Wake up, rise up. And friends, may God help us to not live below or far beneath the wonderful sphere of grace that God has planned for you and for me. Amen. Now, Last thing that I'm going to say will probably get your attention, and just note this, I am not giving anyone any kind of license to do the wrong thing. So if you think about this, then I'm just, I'm already speaking to you before you think about this. Light up, but not in the way you just took it. 
Some of you will go out here, pastor just said. No, pastor didn't say that. What pastor did say is, we ought to make sure that the light of Christ shines through us, upon us, emanates from us. We ought to pray this prayer. Awake, arise, and Christ will shine on you. Boy, what a text. What a text. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. John Wesley made the comment in his explanatory notes on this text. He made the statement that we have to fight for every minute of every day for it to glorify God and be useful for our souls because the enemy is after seizing it for every great evil. Boy, do we think that way? Do we ponder those thoughts? Do we look at life that way? Do we measure our day that way? making the most of the opportunity that you have because the days are evil. He doesn't use the word for the ticking of, of a watch, that kind of time. Chronos, it's kairos. Don't waste the opportunity. Don't waste the opportunity. So then, don't be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Don't get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation. You know, have you ever noticed, you just can't go anywhere anymore until, you know, everybody... Uh, everybody in, in our self-anesthetizing world. I noticed even on our drive to Michigan, there, you know, there's now a, there's a brewery every five feet along the way. We have become a nation of let's get liquored up. We can't handle life, so let's just, let's just get buzzed. And I've noticed even going into a just a furniture store, minding your own business going into a furniture store. I mean, you have, first of all, you know, you have a reclining sofa with a wine rack. You have, you have a television with a, with a wine rack. And you have a bookshelf with a wine rack. And you pretty soon, you know, you, you know you, you've got bathroom cabinetry with a wine rack. I mean, you've got a wine rack everywhere. And... <laughs> Okay, let's stop for a second. <laughs> that was the wrong time <laughs> to give the amen. Let it be so, Lord. Let it be so. <laughs> we'll never forget this service. <laughs> All for the wrong reason. Um, <laughs> I know you. I know you are, Karen. Oh, I just couldn't resist. Uh, isn't it interesting how pretty much everything that we have to offer is a diversion from reality? When the Father, through Jesus and the power of His Spirit, offers the means whereby we thoroughly cope with reality. Our world, all it can do is dull its senses. The Holy Spirit wants to sharpen our senses. The Holy Spirit wants us to be alert, on cue, ready, not out of it somewhere, unuseful, impaired. God wants us to have sharpened senses, never wasting an opportunity for our light to shine in a dark world. Friends, we need to pray that our lives will be lights that shine brightly in a terribly darkened world. All that the world has to offer is dark. Its activities are performed for the most part, although it's getting more brazen 
for the most part, its activities operate in the darkness. We are children of light. We are children of the light of the world. Awake, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Speaking to one another, how should we encourage one another? Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. That's important for us. Always giving thanks above the fray, knowing God's perspective that this too shall pass. And I like the last verse, which we often don't consider, but it needs our consideration today. Be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. It means that we are to line up with one another and even in deference under one another. We are to line up with one another. Not strife, not discord, not contention. But in the body of Christ, we are to line up with one another and under one another. Because we are not vying for position, place, status, preference, but to the contrary. The church of Jesus Christ does well when we pull together, when we honor the Lord with one heart and of the same mind. And this always staggers the imagination of the world that looks on, doesn't it? The world understands when the church is in division and they mock us. What mystifies them is when we love each other, work together, pull together, and don't let little trivial matters divide us that are of no consequence whatsoever. Let your light so shine among men that they will see your good works and glorify our Father in heaven. That's the prayer, isn't it? That's the aim. So here's my challenge for us today, friends, from the inspired word that Paul wrote. Wake up. Rise up. Light up. Light up the world. When you go out into the world, pray that God will help you light up the world. At least your corner of it, your part of it that you'll be able to light up where you go. Whether it's a place of work where you may not even like your job that much, but still light it up for Jesus' sake. Right? Probably if you don't like the job, the others there don't like it either. They will need what you have. Light up your neighborhood. If you have bad neighbors, don't be one. Mow their yard, you know, with the love of Jesus in your heart. Help them out. Well, it's time to, time to quit. I've often thought, don't go longer than your people. So, on that note, we'll stop. Friends, may God help us with a heart resolute and obedient to be conspicuous Christians, conspicuous Christians. Father, these are not our words. They are Your words. These are impossible for us to generate on our own. We can't make ourselves into the description we have just read. This is not self-help. This is not bootstrap religion, but this is cooperation with Your Spirit. We pray that You would help us Lord, help us to heed this great call. If it was at the time sung, what a great song. May it be our song. May it be the song of our heart. So have your way with each of us, we pray. Cement this truth to us in these closing moments. If anybody needs to pray and just needs to seek you, good. If you're compelling someone to come to you for the first time, praise the Lord. But if you just want to get these things across to us in a punctuated way, may that be so as well. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing.
Father, thank you for the day that you have given us, the word that you have given us. We thank you, Lord, for a challenge that I pray your spirit has put upon each of our hearts. That's the intent of this time. And, Lord, there are things in life that are important and they matter, but nothing is important, as important ever as the eternal destiny of our souls and those around us. So, Father, help us to focus on that which is essential. Help us, Lord, to be good stewards of what you've given us and never waste an opportunity to be light in a world that is absolutely overwhelmingly, suffocatingly filled with darkness. May we be the light you want us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Go and be His light. Amen.